Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. All right, so uh, we promised you this, um, and he's here, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Lindros. Woo! How are we doing, guys? Good to be here. So first, I think we got to talk about first, um, uh, you, you, the, the two of you do such great work with Easter Seals. We know. Your tournament, Sorry. your tournament's amazing, but there's a huge number associated with what the kind of money that you guys are raising here, and it's such an important thing. Steve, you can speak to the family element in a second, but Eric, can you... You were just talking off air about this, this the the fundraising number that you guys hit. Yeah, so we've uh, we hit three and a half million, um, which is a big that's a big digit. Not just raised it, but if you look at how the money is uh, is is worked through it, uh, our cost is about twenty two percent. So seventy eight percent of of every dollar raised gets directly to to Easter Seals, wow. and that's the uh, that's significant. Wow. Yeah, and, and that really that good. is high. Like you, you, there have been some like controversies recently. You hear about organizations giving up like i don't know they're, they're only only like 10 percent or 20 oh, percent of the normal. money goes through it's normal yeah. that it's like eight they're running 80 90 percent cost if right? you're at about like what what's normal like 50 something like that and around there i would uh, yeah yeah so the fact that the we're sports doing, organizations ones though. we're almost yeah. at 80 our goal every year is to hit 80 yeah it's very hard to do mm -hmm. with the rise of insurance and the cost of ice and, and whatnot but we've got some wonderful sponsors we've got people that have come uh, back uh, and supported us for what we were doing this 11 years now. Wow. Uh, yeah. it's, I it's, missed the first half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but since Dangles showed up, uh, geez, our fundraising has gone, you know, it's, it's been, it's been incredible. He's been our lead fundraiser. Oh, geez. I'm going to say the last six years. Wow. Yeah. Every year you get like a little cup, right? And the first, first fundraiser. First overall pick too. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> and that's all thanks to you, by the way. You were watching and listening yeah. and donating. That's yeah. it. Is it you more, know, is it more than that? He's got a little different forum than uh, to draw from uh, the average guy, but uh, he does a great job doing it. A little, yeah. Is it I, six championships? It's, uh, I don't know if we've gotten the team championship every year. There are not a couple... the team every year, but no. you have. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. In, individually, yeah. it's been good. But if it's not the team, then, you know, <laughs> what's the point? There you go. Here what's the go. point? Is it... Well, we have fun, too, doing it, right? Oh, and oh, it's oh, a yeah. blast. It's a good time. We went to Scotiabank, uh, um, the, the Scotia Pond this year, mm -hmm. and changed up where we, uh, where we host it. And it's, it worked out really well. Uh, John Cook did a great job with us and uh, and gave us everything we needed and yeah we're looking forward to next year. A question: When you see some of the guys that that you know you played with in this tournament now, like John Leclerc was there this year, mm -hmm. uh, Ray Bork and, and John Leclerc know. comes every year. He drives all the way from Does Philly. He, he hates flying. He oh goes, really? Oh yeah. He'd rather spend uh, the time in his car. He says, "Listen, by the time I get to the airport, by the time I check in, by the time I fly, by the time I get in Toronto." And sit in your traffic. I'd rather <laughs> your traffic. Oh yeah, you should hear him point. You see him point the finger at the, the traffic. Right? <laughs> um, he'd rather be in his car, and uh, that's the way he rolls. He's uh, not afraid of the eight-hour trip, and uh, he shows up every year. Never takes any appearance money. He's just a fantastic guy. Just and, fantastic. And I just, you know, I I wonder, like you guys played at the top top level together. Um, is it fun seeing? Where those guys are all at now oh, in terms yeah, of their skill. Oh, sure. And no, all, we're horrible. <laughs> oh, no. Michael Redford uh, came over too, right? Yes. yes Redford yeah. was over here this year too. And then we went and played in that Hall of Fame game and we were horrible. <laughs> but That's it was kind fun. of a tough, eh? Play yeah. in the tournament like the whole day because you, well, you play with everybody yeah. now. Yeah. But uh, like that day is a lot of That's games. That's a lot of hockey, right? Yeah. And then you have the Hall of Fame game, which I assume is a little bit more difficult than playing against guys well, like Well, you know what? It was, it was fun. It was great. So we try and time it when the Hall of Fame is, uh, is, uh, is having their weekend uh, so we don't have to... Um, I mean, if they're already going to be there, let's come, come on over for Easter Seals. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to pay for your flight. We're trying to, trying to save a few we bucks. We got an 80% here to hit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we do, but that's how we think. That's, that's how brilliant. Think. That's and how you got, do it. Uh, oh, yeah. We got Ray Bork this year. Ray came yes. in. And, Great. You know, Ray's just such a classy, classy guy. Uh, he's, he's, he's funny. He's intense. You know, you still see him out in the ice and he's, you know, he wants to win. Even in these little, you know, charitable games, he's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's time to turn it on a little he, bit, and Ray can still go. He he can still go. I played uh, left wing, which was great because Ray would just 
pass me with the puck and i would be like great job ray and that would be my contribution <laughs> how many times a year do you hit the ice because i saw you make a goal line to blue line backhand sauce pass and it was fucking fantastic that was disgusting it yeah. was gorgeous and but you don't hit the ice that often right i do oh you do okay yeah, so we've got a group that skates tuesdays and thursday mornings over uh north toronto arena Nice. And we've been, I've been running that, we've been running that skate, the Thursday skate for, since I retired. And uh, the Tuesday skate, uh, I think it's been about five, four, four years now. Wow. And there's some, yeah, there's some good players out there. There's, yeah. Do you still, do you still want to win when you play that? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody, like there's that. no point in playing unless you, you know, you, you want to, is it the end all be all, of, you know, but does it affect your day? Yes. <laughs> 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 that's so the way it is and i bet you that 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 goes for everybody in those dressing rooms when we come in and play we have a great time doing it but it's you know you want to win you want to play well and you're a coach now too oh just the, the young punks and uh i'm learning quite a bit about how this minor hockey works uh getting uh, a real it's it's real changed opener. a bit well, it has changed a lot and things are happening way quicker than i than i thought but um and you know, what used to be the norm or how you could, uh, you know. Uh, Maintain discipline, I think. But uh, it's just, parents it's are really cooperative. It's very, <laughs> listen, it's, yeah. it's pretty soft out there, right? Yeah, it, there's yeah. some areas, uh, there's some, there's some situations where it's, it's, it's soft. I don't well, know. I didn't know how to verbalize it earlier, but it's. Um, no, I like I that you'll still, <laughs> you're just telling us off the mic again, but that you'll still be like, hey. That's not good enough, and if you do it again, you're bad. It's not that it's not good, and I'm and I'm talking about we have eight year old kids on our my my older son's team, and I've benched my son before for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you don't, mm -hmm. you that you get benched. I've taken him right out of a game for 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 um, disciplinary reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's normal. Like and that's, they get that's it. how we grew yeah. up, and then they change, right? Yeah, then they change. You're out there. You don't take a two minute shift. Mm -hmm. No one has a two minute shift. When it's time to change and you hear that door rattle, <laughs> get your butt off. Yeah. I like that. And you have to learn those not, lessons you're gonna miss early your, on. You're going to miss your little rotation the next time. You know, even sitting in line and listening to what a coach has to say or, you know, and I've, I've got really good coaches with us, um, you know, pay attention. If you, you know, don't be playing around. It doesn't matter who's first in line. Like all these little things, because what it does is it just allows the, all the rest of the other kids not to be distracted by you know, the, the, the rustling and the tussling that's going on uh, by, by three or four. So mm -hmm. get it straightened out and uh, your team will be uh, better off. I like that. Yeah, and if you learn those lessons early, then when you're in your teen years, you won't have them. You right. know, you'll know. You would hope. You would hope. <laughs> you would yeah, hope. you would hope. <laughs> <laughs> you would hope it sticks. I don't, yeah. think you, I don't think you're playing hockey in the teens if you haven't figured this out pretty quick. Right. Right. So, so I got to ask you about, like, there's obviously so much we want to talk about. It's trade deadline week. Trade deadline. Yeah. And I, I want to know for you, like... Yeah. I mean, I, you were never traded at trade deadline, right? No, nope, I no. was waiting one year. Yeah, so can we? St I want to. I want to hit that because okay. I can remember that year. <laughs> yeah, and here's here's what I remember. I remember dying to see Eric Lindros as a Leaf. Oh, my I remember God. dying, and I remember Pat Quinn going to the media here in Toronto. This was a big day. This mm -hmm. is where I went out and like actually, actually like bought a newspaper at 12 years old, and and Pat Quinn going to the media and saying we had a deal, and Bobby Clark walked it back. That's what I remember. Now, I can't remember if that was an off-season or whatever. No, it was trade deadline. It was trade deadline. And Bobby Clark then came out and said, I'm not trading for a player with a fucking broken back or something like that. And I think he was referring to Danny Markov. Because it was supposed to be, oh. Danny Markov was supposed to be included in that deal. And then I guess he flipped it at the last second and said, no, we want Coverle instead. So Pat Quinn and Bobby Clark had it out. What was your... What was your feeling just, around that? What did you know? Like, what, did, what, what you was don't happening? know anything. You, you don't know you, anything. You, eh? you really don't. It's the same as uh, that arbitration at the after the draft and 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 being picked. And go, you're in the dark, right? You're just waiting. So, um, is it stressful? Yeah, yeah, for hmm. sure, it's stressful. It's. it's I mean, you, you want to play. You want to get out and play and and, uh, and and move on and 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 start over and and have a great time. And uh, yeah, uh, it's it's. It's tricky. One, right. one of the great things about the Easter Seals tournament is sometimes you 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 get to hear stories in the locker room behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the best part, right? Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. The, the wildest one for me, I didn't know this, is uh, Ray Bork said the deadline that he went from Boston to Colorado, he thought in his heart that he was going to Philly. Yes, I know. Oh. I know. Yeah. So what, what happened there? Why didn't it work? I don't know. Yeah. Same with Cujo, right? Cujo. 
I had talked to Cujo up to, you know, free agent signing. Everything, I thought everything was set. I thought oh, we were in good shape. From Edmonton to, it would have been Edmonton to He Philly? went to Toronto. He ended up signing in uh, in Toronto. Uh, that, you know, he had a, he said, that, listen, I got my Flyers hat right here already. <laughs> and <laughs> the next. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we, I'm uh, sure you're uh, not. But... <laughs> no offense. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, whatever. Uh, Cujo would have been a, a, a very big part of. Our team, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> obviously, yeah, obviously, very big part of our team. So yeah. that was disappointing. But anyway, we seemed to uh, we were we were second a lot for some of these things. But anyway. what do you what do you think a team? I've always wondered this because, like you know, we were talking about a little bit earlier the Seattle Kraken have kind of surprised in the West. West a little weak this year. But do you think that like what does a team need to do for a general manager to deserve I, I, by general manager standards to deserve getting an upgrade at the deadline? What, what do you want to see? Is it, is it, is it place in the standings? Is it how you play? Like, you know, cause some GMs will be like, yeah, I don't feel like they earned it. Like the Leafs, when they dropped the David Ayers game, mm-hmm. that's when they said, we're not signing Bogosian and we're not going to make any trades at the trade deadline. Didn't matter anyway. It was COVID season, but um, you know, those are the types of things that GMs, when you watch hockey, you watch it differently than the rest of us. What are your thoughts? I don't know if I watch it any differently than the rest of us. <laughs> are you yelling at the but screen too? Specific, yeah, well, I mean, like, be more specific with what you're you're saying. In terms well, of, is it go time and when is it time to, to sell? When is yeah. it time to hold? Yeah, how do you know? That's a tricky one. I mean, that's why GMs are GMs. And it's not the easiest job in the world. It's a real, it's, it's, it's hard. It's chemistry. It's trying to figure out what pieces will work together. It's doing your homework. It's having... It's trusting your scouts, it's trusting your pro scouts beyond belief as to what during the season will be a good mix. Um, you know, bringing in certain personalities and making just because everybody's so good on paper doesn't mean that it necessarily works when it when it's uh, and it's time to put the put the skates on. So um, having that having a wonderful group that you can go to that's you know it's and sometimes they got to change it up, right? Mm. It, like having the same old guard all the time does not necessarily work. Yeah. Um, uh, getting fresh people in. It'd be a really cool to see if you could set up some sort of scenario where you could judge scouts or rate <laughs> scouts where they could be associated with a certain player. Mm. That player goes, you know, and you, and you follow them for 10 years. And that, what did that scout say about that particular player? Like everything was kind of public. So that right. you could actually create a scouts could create a market for themselves, and and you know you put you associate your name with a certain player, then and that player does really well, and you do that with a whole bunch of, of players that are, you know, in the third, fourth, fifth rounds that really do do great. Well, then you're coveted. There, there was that uh, I want to say Swedish scout with Detroit who was credited with finding like Zetterberg and Holmstrom and can't remember they if it was found them, but but the key thing with that was in the rules they didn't have to bring them over until they were 21 or 22 mm, that okay. was the difference because now you're bringing over there if you check out their rookie years they're coming over at 20 i think it was 21 right they're men they've already they played pro for three years 18 19 20 they're not kids they're not mm-hmm. kids anymore right. they're playing and they're in the swedish elite league which is a good league right so when they're getting and they're they're bringing them in they're they're refined they're it's not uh you know, you're not getting the Chevy Impala. You're you're getting the, the smooth driving. You know, no offense to Chevy. <laughs> but you're getting, yeah, if you're, you're listening, you're right, getting, and you drive an Impala. You're getting, you, we think you're getting, right. Let me go back to Chevy then. You're going. You're, you're getting more. You're getting more of the Cadillac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, and so I, I think you know, uh, as fans, obviously we follow trade deadline closely and that sort of thing. And and you know, one of the one of the biggest stories, not just. Um, not just right now, but this year has been the Flyers. And I mean, I think we've played oh, five, five, we six. Go. Uh-oh, there sorry. We go. Five, oh. six weeks in a row we've been playing Torts Clips. Yeah. Um, oh just, why did Hayes get, uh, why did they bench Hayes? I, I, why did they bench half the guys on that team? Well, I mean, the Hayes one, I did not quite understand. No, he was the leading scorer at the time. And John Torrell said, listen, I don't listen, like But if he's not playing up to par, I mean, I, mm-hmm. and I didn't watch enough to know. Mm-hmm. I didn't, but I, it was really a weird one for they me. They didn't talk about it either. Like they they benched Sandheim with his family uh, in a period because they're from Manitoba. They benched him right before the Calgary Flames game, and he took warm up. And I believe he played junior with the Hitmen. Yeah, so yeah. so he's yeah. like you know huge connection to the area. Like what? Yeah, like, there's some weird things, and you know what? And, and, and you see this a lot. It's gone on for years, but a coach never looks bad <laughs> when he goes and benches a, a top end player, right? Because the players, yeah, they're going to come back and do really great. And oh my god, I benched him. He's going to 
<laughs> he's flourished now, right? Or he does he 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 does horribly, and well, that's why I benched him, right? But because he's no, bad. it's not. It's a win win. Right? Oh, like I don't yeah. I don't get it. I think it's just it was a weird one for me, but. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, you know, obviously I'm not in the dressing room. I don't know what's going on with all these other well, scenarios. Well, the Flyers were a team, though. We've talked about this a lot. And I'm not talking specifically no, about no, no, the Flyers. No, 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 no. We know. Yeah. We know, no, no. Okay. But I mean, like, they are a team with an identity. There's a brand. Like, Boston's got a brand. Yeah. Philly, Philadelphia, Philadelphia is a brand. Broad yeah. Street Bullies. You guys, Legion of Doom. You guys were scary to play against. Um, nobody, you know, what do they call that? The uh, In the 70s, the Philadelphia flu, where guys would just magically Philly become flu. sick. The Philly flu. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like... You know, when you look at the Flyers, who I'm sure there's a huge emotional attachment to, still. for sure, you want them to win. What, what do you What do you think? Where do you even go? That's Where do you even start? Well, what's the plan? Mm-hmm. What do you think the plan is? I don't know. I haven't heard a plan. I don't know what the plan is. So I, I can't. You can't unless there's you know you you, you say I'm going to accomplish this, and these are my 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 three or four principal core values or goals. Uh, and you say that publicly, how do we assess what your, what your, what your plan is? And they haven't done that. I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't heard it. it. So I, I don't know. I, I mean, and success helps, right? And they've had a lot of injuries. I, you know, let's not kid ourselves. There's, there's been, uh, you know, missing uh, Coos is, is a big one and Ellis and, and whatnot. But listen, I, Ellis has probably done it, mm-hmm. right? Like, let's not keep using the old. Can't excuse. use that as an excuse. Well, and, and then, so now you've got, you're in this position, you're not, making the playoffs right so what are you what are you doing how are you going to better yourself for next year how are you going to get yourself in a better position come draft time where you can i mean that's all you got left right you got draft and you got you got free agency and like they don't really have a franchise face but they've spent all this money in the off season on you know because ellis looks like he's done they spent big on ristolainen they spent yeah. big on d'angelo and d'angelo i like that yeah. guy's got I, I like him. Plays with fire. He play, you need it. Yeah. There's not enough, I don't know if the term's animosity or, I mean, even stronger would be hate in the league. There's very little, of, I don't see the- it, Aggression. I mean, there isn't, there's not that much. I mean, I look at that, you know, look at the Calgary, two weeks ago, mm-hmm. Calgary Ranger game. Oh, yeah. We're all talking about it, right? Everyone's oh, yeah. talking great about game. it. Great game. Why? Physical. High, you know, great scoring, lots of good goaltending, some wonderful plays. Um, but there is, there is hate. There is a little bit of anger. Yeah. I don't understand why a guy, when he makes a, a clean hit, like eight on the Rangers did their, uh, the captain. Truba. Um, Truba. Yeah. yeah. He, and he ha- feels that he has to fight right after ridiculous. he makes a clean Twice. hit. That, that to me is ridiculous. Oh, but there's yeah. gotta be the guy that comes up to challenge. He should, you know, two minutes, go sit in the box. Yeah. Especially what do you like? You, you don't even fight, kid. Like, right? right. <laughs> I don't remember like, who it was. Just, just like, don't bother. Dubé? I think it was Dylan Dubé. Yeah, I yeah. Think it was like, Dylan. And I get him trying to stick up for his teammate and all the, you know, blah, 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 blah. But yeah. no, don't. Don't. That was a clean hit. That's part of hockey. Mm-hmm. That's part of hockey. Of we can course. do without, you don't need the fighting. Yeah. I'm trying to think during your career, did, did you ever encounter a scenario? like the current flyers where the coach is essentially the face of the franchise. Huh? No, <laughs> no, we right. had good, we had good players. We had good, uh, we had, we had good players. Um, it is a bit strange. Yeah. You know, when they're, you know, I, I, I mean, I work for the team a little bit on, um, in an ambassador role. So I don't, you know, it, it's, it's hard to, it's hard. It, it must be, difficult to market it must be difficult to um you know to keep uh keep your season uh ticket people happy mm-hmm. your box is full well and the thing about flyers fans is they're not really shy to tell you they're not shy to tell no. you and you know what they know hockey mm-hmm. they know when things are going the mm-hmm. way they should they're not they're not fools they're passionate mm-hmm. i don't know if you check the name on your license i don't think you're going to lose your ambassador role <laughs> <laughs> you, never, you never know <laughs> Well, it's, 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 you know, it's difficult because, you know, uh, the, the Flyers are one of the more marketable teams in the NHL too, right? Like you're talking about a team that's... That's a great place to play. It, when you're rocking, yeah, when you're getting into playoff time, it is... I can't think of another spot that you'd rather be. It's, I mean, you can you do your Leaf Nation bit here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Leaf Nation bit, but I'm telling you, Philly is, Philly is intense. It's good. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. yeah it really the league's is. better when they're good. 
You yes. know, it's more exciting when Philly's a, a place to be in a destination. They're actually playing well. Yeah. It's a no, shame that right now they're in this malaise where they're just kind of treading water and not really going in any direction. Right. They're not bad enough to be in the Bedard sweep, sp- sweep st- sorry, sweep sweep stakes, really, but they're not good enough to be in the playoff picture, mm-hmm. right? And that is... Well, they're, they're not even close to the playoff be. picture, right? No, they're so not. how do you... Like, what, what, what's St. Louis doing? Right? Retooling. They're, okay. And they're grabbing, not just retooling and, and grabbing draft picks. They're getting... Players. They're getting pricks. Oh, yeah. Like, they're getting... Think about... No, they are. Yeah. I thought you I mispronounced picks. I, uh, <laughs> they're getting no, picks I've and got, pricks. I've got what yeah. they have here. But, but no, they, they're they're looking at their identity and they're going back to, you know, uh, five years ago when they won, four years ago? Uh, 2019. Yeah, four, four years four, ago. Okay. What was our identity then? They were big and miserable to play against. Right. Yeah. What are they doing now? Retooling in that direction. And yeah. they've got two, like, I've got Kairou and Robert Thomas locked up to long-term deals. So you probably want to have... Players that mix that. But here's what they've got. Here's what they picked up just this trade deadline. Oh, this this tweet's wild. So they've traded Tarasenko, Mikola, O'Reilly, Achari, and Barbashev. They've got a first in 2023, another conditional first in 2023, second in 24, third in 23, a fourth in 24, which is conditional. And then Zach Dean, Sammy Blay, Hunter Skinner, Mikhail Abramoff, and Adam Goddard. Wow. And and we're in the Timo Meyer sweepstakes. <clears throat> and Kapanen off waivers, too. That's true. They did yeah. take Kapanen. Doug, yeah. he's active, which is good. Yeah, you know, because they need to go in some sort of direction because what they have right now wasn't working, and now he's actively trying to do something with the roster, which is good to see. Was there? Uh, uh, I want. <laughs> was there a team at, when you can remember Philadelphia? You know, when you roll it in town, was there any building that you were like, "Shit, I don't want to. I, I don't know if I want to play here, or I don't know if I want to play against well, these I guys." Want to live or play against the guys? Play against, play against the guys. So, like, who are the tough guys to really play against that wouldn't? Just give you a headache, like oh man, like annoying. There, I can't stand nah, these it guys. was like it was different though back then because you'd have fighters, right? Mm-hmm. So you, you'd, you'd you'd roll into St. Louis, and there's Tony Twist down the hallway, <laughs> this great big dumbbell, just like <laughs> you pump iron before the game, like, and you Tony, see him <laughs> like, down, the, down the hallway. And, you know, and then there's also, you know, who else is there is Kelly Chase, right? That's right. And they all called it the race to chase because no one wanted to fight twist. (laughs) So, so so, you know, like it didn't affect, you know, I didn't, you know, whatever. You go to Detroit, you know, know, hey, Bob, how you doing? You having a good day? Let's have a, you know, keep it real. All right. No problem. Good. You know, done. (laughs) You know, so no, there wasn't a a city you, you, there was. No, we didn't. Have you guys might have been the city. <laughs> we weren't. There wasn't a lot of fear at, at at all. Out of we were, we had we had a real good balanced group for the most part. We had uh, we never went through a season where we didn't feel that we had teamed up. No, or where we felt like we, we well, had lacked it. So let's talk about. Uh, I mean, you you were with Toronto. Obviously, it was a boyhood dream, or at least that's what we were told. I don't it know. Was. If I, yeah, it was. And when you watch the Leafs now, because you live here, mm-hmm. what do you see? They're skilled. Mm-hmm. They are. Um, I, geez, I, I mean, I look at Muzzin as being such a big part of this, right? If that, if Muzzin was in the picture with all yeah. this, it would be. I think you got. I think you're. That's a that's a huge factor. Um, listen, do they play? Does the league? We all know that the the rules kind of change a little bit come playoff time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And what is a penalty during the regular season is. Possibly a penalty in the playoffs. <laughs> Likely not. <laughs> Possibly not. Um, how does that group adapt to when it, the going gets tough? Mm-hmm. Right? Um, that's, I don't know. Uh, but O'Reilly's, you know, he's... He's solid. Yeah. Solid. Achari, too. I'm surprised by how much I like him. Yeah. yeah he's, I hated him on the Bruins. Not gonna lie. I also did. That's probably why we like him so <laughs> It is probably yeah. why we like him. No, those, the, the, those are the guys you... Those are the guys that you need. Yeah. The playoff yeah. toughness thing is something that has been a narrative in this era of the Leafs because they are so highly skilled. And Dubas has never really fully solved it, you know, because they haven't really won anything. Listen, Chris King and that group, they run the level of how things are going to be called. Mm-hmm. And if you don't adapt to that, then you don't win. Right? Like, right. It makes it a lot harder. Yeah. If you were staring down Tampa and you're on the Toronto Maple Leafs right now, yeah. what's, your, what's your way through? I don't know. 
Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a team that's tough. They're good. They're tough. Yeah. I mean, you look at Maroon. Like he oh, gets oh, his, yeah. he gets it done. Yeah, he doesn't just chirp and scrap. He's potting goals. Yep. He's making. He's making his. He does a lot of really nice passing on his his exit exits out of his uh, out of his own zone. Like if you he doesn't he he makes a lot of really good that third pass right or second pass. Uh, he's, he's, he does a lot more than people give him credit for. Yep. Um, but I mean, you know, you look at the, they've got guys that just grind. Yeah. They just grind. And they wear Perry. on you. They wear on you. And just when you think you're, you know, you've, you've got a little bit of daylight, then you're, you know, you're, you're looking at Edmund, right? And you're looking at, oh my God. Like yeah. at, they're just so, they're so good. To your point about Maroon, the last Stanley Cup final he wasn't in was 2018. Isn't that crazy? It was wild. Yeah, no, it absolutely was three wild. Three in a row, and then uh, you know, fell off the wagon there for last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, nuts! You can't win it every <laughs> single year. But, <laughs> oh god! No, he's like they've got all their parts going. Uh, uh, who is a former captain of uh, the Generals, uh, Sorelli? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just they they they're skilled. But when it's time to 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 hit that, let's get dirty, boys. Mm -hmm. Let's get let's get let's get right down to it. They're there. They can do everything. Can and do it's it. led by the guys up front. Like Kucherov's a tough player. Stamkos is a tough player. Like, and then all the other guys follow suit. Kucherov loses his mind. Yeah, like you, he, he's an assassin sometimes. I think you could say dirty. <laughs> yeah, we can say he's straight up a dirty player. But like, he's one of the best. Yeah, right. he's one of the best. Yeah, and yeah. Have you guys talked about his uh, the after they won um, when you, you know they were doing sat it. an entire year and then started playing? Well, the no, remember? Well, no. After was it was, they they won his press conference after you know two years ago? That was amazing. I just I still number one bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, just called it right out. It yeah. was it was uh, that was amazing. That was great. Mm -hmm. That yeah. really was. Yeah. So so and their coach seems to just year after year. He doesn't get tired. Re relate to them mm. and extract, you know, what looks like everything that they have to offer. And he's been there like 10 years and, and hasn't it, gotten and stale. It, no. uh, exactly. Yeah. You know? That's hard. So when you're, when you're getting coached by a guy and if you're having like an off game and the coach is giving you shit, how do they get the best out of you versus somebody that just can't get through to you? You know, from your days. I think a lot of, a lot of it has to do with getting to know each player and, and everyone is different. We're all different people. Yeah, you know, like it's the same thing as as physical training, and and, and you know it, the old days, are, you know everyone goes and has the same bike program. No, it's not the way it works. You know, some guys have got the ability to to ride a bike for fifty hours, and other guys can't, you know, do a sprint. And you know, everyone's a bit different. So, how much do you know about that person's life? Are you asking questions? Are you hanging out a little bit? Is there a, is there some sort of connect that that you can you can draw from mm -hmm. where you can. It's not just the nexus and those thing. You, it's more. You got to figure out what makes each person tick and go to your tool of tricks and, and figure out a way to, to, to extract. That's what it, that's, I mean, that's what great coaching is. What made you guys tick? Legion of Doom, that sort of thing. What made you, what, what fired you guys up? We just had fun together. Yeah. That part was, you know, that, that's the, I think that's the biggest key to any team doing well is, or, or line or whatever. And, hopefully team, but having fun. Mm -hmm. And when the team's having fun, you're going into, listen, each schedule, as good as one schedule may be, there's always points in that, you know, especially, you know, now in the season where it's kind of those dog days of hockey mm -hmm. is, you know, late, late February. And it's, you know, it's fine in that way when you get off the bus after a long road trip, uh, you know, and you're going into a crappy little practice rink that's dripping water and it's just stinks <laughs> and, you know, it's like, what how can we have fun now like yeah. what are we going to do for the next hour and a half that's going to you know get us ready for the game and it, it, it's being creative and 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 coming up with different ideas to you know to, to to absorb pop this week more than probably any other in the season you're going to have players walking into walls and and stuff like that you know distracted by the trade news sure. and stuff D did you ever have to tell guys like mid game like hey you know you're not getting traded right now Right, like we no, we, we no, got a game no, to win we never, here. We never had that. No, no, no. never had that, that problem. The, uh, 
Oh, I never thought of the line. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a different way to say it? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Is it, yeah, maybe more diplomatic. <laughs> Wake the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Get your shit together. Uh, no. No, you kind of stink tonight? No, not, yeah. uh, I'd be a Johnny LeClaire line. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Yeah. He he just has that presence where all he has to do is give you a look, and I actually oh, yeah. saw him do it to you. Oh yeah, because I we got you on the team, and I was like, you know what, man, if you could wear the Leafs jersey, that'd be sick. And you're like, yeah, for sure. But I noticed the Flyers jersey was hanging in the stall. I'm like, okay, interesting. You put the Leafs jersey on. Our first game was against John Leclerc's team, and he just looked at you and went, really? And you went. Yeah, you're right. And you yeah. just turned around and put on your flyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. What kind of a, yeah, what he's kind a great of, guy. What kind of a difference in play is there from the regular season to the playoffs? Like, not just the refing. I, I've heard it picks up. It's noticeable. It, it is. There is. It, it's. It's an intensity. It's not that. Everything is just done with more purpose and 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 you know attention to detail. There's just a, a real fiery, it's just, it's just super, super intense. I don't know how else to describe it. I'm running dialed. Out. You're right into it and yeah. you don't leave it at the rink too. You're going home and you're thinking about it the night before. And then, you know, if you're not playing, then the other half, the other, you know, the first round, half the other groups playing and you're, it's, it's hockey, 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 mm-hmm. hockey. And, and even when you're at home, sometimes they have you stay at the hotel. And so you're together. Now you're like, you're in, like you go home to go get some fresh, or go pick up a, a fresh shirt or, you know, a blazer or something. That's about all you're doing. Right. It's, t- it's go time. So it's, it's this, it's, it's interesting. It's a, uh, it's an intense time. Yeah. D- did you watch games like in your off time? Yeah. 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 I, it always, whenever a, a team gets eliminated or whatever, and they're like, oh, I haven't been watching the play. Oh, after it I drives got eliminated? Me no, not, not that much. No, no eh? No, 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 once you're done. No, no, I watch a, I watch a little bit, but uh, not not. Why is that? I don't know. Just wasn't from. If you're, if you're not in it, okay. right? Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You know, I imagine I never, it'd, it'd make you a little upset. I never understood cheerleaders, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on a podcast with them now. I guess it's like uh, showing up to work on your off day for you. <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, yeah. You know, you'd watch the final. You see, you know, you see some great, good, really good stuff. Obviously, you watch know what's going on and you watch the highlights and things like that i did anyway but mm-hmm. everyone's different i guess yeah. of course yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 well i i've it's just it's funny because you know you had some deep runs and then unfortunately in in toronto it just you know that was just a it's <sighs> the beginning of the you're, really you're, lean years you're killing him look at his face <laughs> look at his face but then you go to new york and i've always wanted to ask you about new york because i've heard it's a really we had kipper on years ago mm-hmm. he so said it's a york, really i was in new york before toronto yeah. oh you were new york before toronto yeah, that's yeah, right that's where yeah. you originally got yeah. so i heard it's a really special place to play and i just kind of wonder what your experience was like that it, you know the city is the city is the city the rangers the city. fans are intense good fans real good fans wonderful building like historic mm-hmm. it's just it's great it's a not the best ice quality. I can always bug Adam Graves. And Adam Graves is another guy that shows up at Easter Seals all the time. Every year? Every year. Uh, you know, Gravy has scored 50 in the Madison Square. That's like scoring 70 in Toronto, right? Because <laughs> the ice is, you know, you never know when the the the, the, the circus has come in and yeah. he's, he's, he's stick handling over a bunch of elephant uh, uh, <laughs> stuff. Yeah, stuff. Um, no, but it's true. Like there was... Uh, it was, it was, it's just a, it's a, it's a cool spot and you never know who's in the crowd. And, and, you know, it was just, it's New York and there's a real, I think it's hard to win as a Ranger playing at home. Cause everyone's kind of amped up same way in Toronto. Toronto's not, when you play in Toronto for the Maple Leafs, it's not the easiest place to have it uh, as your, as your, you know, the guys are coming in Toronto. They know it's, you know, Toronto's a Mecca. Uh, you, they want to do well. We hear that a lot, like yeah. that it's hard to play here. Why is that? Hard to come in? To, the, yeah, well. The, no, no. It's, I, I'm just saying that when when a, a road team comes in, they want to do really well. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Toronto's yeah, yeah, yeah. the spot. Toronto's yeah. the spot. No, you living, just, you'll I, hear no, about. I didn't mean it the other way. No. Sometimes well, star players don't want to. And then go play in Arizona. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, beautiful. No. It's, like, it's, 
I know. I mean, listen, you played in the, like three of the biggest markets in the sport. I know. But it, it, you like, remember that restaurant called the Canary? You yes. Real, so in Toronto, we'd go stop at the Canary for breakfast, you know, and after a game on your way down to the Lakeshore Arena or whatever. And everyone in that spot knew that from the night before. They're all reading the paper. They're all watching. The, oh, yeah. They all know if you had a stinker or a great game the night before, even when you're getting your egg. Like it's, and that's, there's, that's good mm -hmm. you know you want to do well it, 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 you don't go like it's yeah you want to go hide well because i keep the places to hide what do they always say what's it Bur brian burke always says it's like they got eight teams in the no trade and it's all the canadian teams in buffalo basically yeah and and toronto is always interesting because there's a lot of or there has been in the past hometown kids that don't want to come home yeah right so it's it, that's why it was I, so i don't get it i just think it's so much fun when you're doing really well it's a and even when it's you know some tougher times it makes those the, those good times wash it so far down the river. It's uh, it's a spe there's special places to play. What's another special place? Do you think I'd love uh, Montreal would be great. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember sitting in Montreal and I've, I was with I was with, I think it was with the Le no Rangers. No, I was with Philly and we were up three to one going into the uh, uh, and we just finished uh, the intermission. You're going back to the bench and you're getting ready to start the second period and, and we had scored. Uh, Two power play goals, and I was on for a goal against. And this guy's yelling from the stand. You may have two points, Lindros, but you are still minus one. <laughs> 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 <You know? laughs> I wonder what he's doing so, now. You know, but that's, but isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's that's awesome. awesome. That's great shit. Yeah. That is just wonderful stuff, right? Yeah. That's a hardcore fan. Yeah, yes. You know, but plus that's, minus like, stats. That's that's fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. You came up. You came up in in and and really, I mean, it, it, at your peak, where like it was like the peak of the dead puck era too. Thank you to the New Jersey Devils for that. But mm. I I want to know there were some great goalies in your generation. Mm. Amazing. Hasek. Who was the best one? Uh, Wah Hasek brother. Nah, Hasek, Hasek and Brodeur. I really, I think, were they were. I mean, they were special. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think they're. They seem to rise to the occasion. They love the, they love the attention, mm -hmm. which I think that you, helps. I think you need to. I think goalies are they. They need to kind of get a little bit of sunshine, and and they they thrive under it. Um, yeah, those are two real special, and for different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. You got Dom, who's you know, he's going to do a stop a puck. Yeah. No, he's completely unorthodox. And then you've got uh, you know more of your 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 normal style. Uh, goaltender with smaller pads, quick, um, but also because of the rules and the way that they could, they held up uh, their defense held up so well. Uh, when you went into Fortune, he really worked on his stick handling capability. And Verdure might, you know, he was fantastic. He was yeah, we remember the Leafs played him a couple of years oh, ago in the playoffs. We're, I mean, I mean, the trapezoid thing behind the net is because of Marty Verdure. He's mm -hmm. too good at it. Yeah. He was just too damn good. Yeah. We're, well, no. The trapezoid thing is because the rules oh, okay. were such that if you held up and Ken Danico wanted to make sure that you're going to stay in the blue line and that puck, you know, you're there and you can hold, hook, hold, whatever, whoever that defenseman was, then their whole team was very good at it. Right. Then there's time for whoever to do whatever they wanted behind. Sooner or later, that puck's going to get behind the net. So it didn't matter mm. if the trapezoid was in there or not. <laughs> Fair enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, were yeah. you part of the 96 All-Star game where Hasek stood on his uh, friggin' brain and Nolan scored that goal against yes, him finally. The, the point, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Was yeah. it? I guess you would have been. Were you on his team or against him? Must have been on. You must have been on, we're right? Because it was East West. Yeah. It? yeah, yeah. What was what? What were you guys saying on the bench? He stopped like thirty shots. It's the All Star game. An All Star. Game. <laughs> I know it's yeah. the All Star game, but it's like the only one I ever remember being competitive. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to do that. <laughs> He's doing his job. Just, just another day. Hey, is there anything? <laughs> is there anything they can do to make? Don't, that? don't look surprised, boys. That's why he's here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's like when a, when a couple of bad men's leagues teams get a, like a ringer goalie. Yeah, right. Just yeah. one. Yeah. What? Well, oh, us. Uh, yeah, us. us. What? What can, you, what can they do to make the All Star game? Did, I don't know. I watch that thing, and oh. it's it's I, oof, it's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got. Players are running out of excuses. I think you just, I don't know what you do. Maybe. So it's a celebration of 
acknowledging who's had a really good start to the year or the first 50 games or so, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got that. You want to bring in your marketing people and you want to have a bit of a party for all your, your league sponsors. Mm -hmm. So you've got that. <sighs> the game itself just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The, the, as much as you try to dress up those shootouts and, you know, no, no. it no. doesn't, it doesn't, I don't see it anyway. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Some of that three on three is exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some good plays there, but is it, you know, is it it's hockey? not competitive? No, no, it's not. Um, but so maybe just have a party, <laughs> you know, that was honestly, <laughs> no right? hockey, no just hockey like, or whatever, like, do whatever. Like, I don't know how you set speech it up. Speech competition, but family feud, <laughs> anything, <laughs> but just bring in a bring in the group. Yeah. And and acknowledge each one that's had a great start to the season, mm -hmm. and maybe it's just I, I mean, the it's just not it's just not great. Yeah, there's no reason to just, watch the game. There isn't. No, I like the party idea. The party idea. Sure, and then you idea. got you got your marketing group that's happy, right? And there's things to do at the at the at the party. You know, you could set up shooting competitions. You could do you know crazy whatever you wanted to do. You can get creative that way. But the game itself in the skills competition, yeah, I like watching Harder Shot. I like watching the accuracy. I like watching uh, uh, the skating. speed. Yeah. yeah. Those things, yes. Right? But make a party around something that's like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it's the just the skills competition. Because, yeah, that's been more exciting than the game Easily. on Saturday. Yeah. As the Friday skills competition. Is it true that everybody's hung over for the game on Sunday anyway? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Just, no, you can't. <laughs> oh, I can. <laughs> yes. Hey, this show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Now, we always talk about mental health on this show and how important it is. BetterHelp's great. Uh, and the reason that it's great is because it gives you the opportunity to match with a therapist that works for you. And it's so important, and all three of us have done this, we've talked about it before, to have a therapist that you have a connection to right? Chemistry matters when it comes to therapy and nobody actually really talks about that. No. But when you've waited months to get matched with a therapist, a lot of times people are like, well, this is the one I have and I don't want to give it up even if you're really not connecting and they're not getting you and you're not getting them, right? BetterHelp matches you with somebody in like 48 hours. And, and here's the thing, you choose the communication. You control that. So do you want to talk over text? Do you want to talk over voice chat? Do you want to talk over phone? completely your call and we believe especially you know late winter when it's gray and hard and let's be honest some of us have some seasonal mm. that would be me yeah um uh you know I, I think it's it's definitely if you're if you're at the point where you're thinking you want to give uh, therapy a try you might want to give better help a try um so uh discover your potential with better help visit betterhelp.com slash sdp today to get 10 percent off your first month that's better h-e-l-p.com slash sdp Hey, if you think you know which way it's going to go, and maybe you think you do, maybe you're like Jesse and you're like, Ryan O'Reilly is going to be a leaf. And we're like, Jesse, what do you know? You did sort of you nail did. that. Well, I, wish I wish I bet on it. I don't like that. Yeah, you can. I don't, I don't puts, like that at That all. is a weird thing. Anyway, you can like put, you, you can, you can lay down your knowledge, sports interaction, pregame, live and play one of the many prop bets. And of course there's trade deadline stuff. Sports interaction makes it easy to deposit, play and cash out. If you want to bet, see all that sports betting has to offer sports interaction.com slash STPN uh, or in Ontario, you can download the app uh, using the QR code on your screen. 19 plus please play responsibly. Everyone knows Peloton makes bikes, duh. But uh, there is also so much more to that. There is treadmills and there's a ton of other classes like yoga, strength training, hit and boxing. And Steve, you like to take a nice 30 minute ride through various locations. That's the other thing that I, I think people don't talk about enough is like, I feel like going to Austria and riding a bike today. Do they have a yeah. Guernsey route? I don't know. On yeah. I am going <laughs> to lobby them for it. I need Guernsey. <laughs> I want to ride through Guernsey. Uh, <laughs> they have Scotland. Do okay. They? They do have We're getting close. Okay. <laughs> they also have the uh, the the Pacific Coast uh, Highway. What do they call it? Oh, uh, California. Uh, yeah. <laughs> California. Yeah. Just because it's a road I drove on. Once, once you hop off the two, 405, you can like get on get the, on the yeah. tip. Yeah. <laughs> Peloton offers thousands of on-demand <laughs> classes available 24-7. That means you can work out whenever and wherever it's convenient to you. 
because nothing gets you moving like the perfect song too. Peloton has the best playlist. So if you're looking for EDM or 90s pop or what I do, which is 80s hard rock, I always look for those classes. Mm -hmm. Peloton has the music to fit your mood and you can try Peloton right now risk-free with a 30-day home trial, new members only, not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.ca slash home dash trial. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I uh, so in, in Chris Chelios' book, he talks about what Stevie Eisman was like as a captain. And I guess if you had a bad game, Steve Eisman would, would glare at you from across the dressing room. And there are players who have stories out there of like averting their eyes because they didn't want Stevie staring at them after a game. What kind of captain were you? I don't know. I didn't. Uh, Did you like if they had a if they had a shit game? I think that's, up for, that's up for a guy like uh, <laughs> next, next <laughs> Goofy to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna write one? No, I'm no. good. Um, good call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. It takes think too long. They, well, listen, it's, it's just no need. Certain things just don't need to occur. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, no, you're you got to be intense. Mm -hmm. Without intensity and without purpose and without accountability, but it's a fine line of, you know, I don't know. Like the coach comes in and I got you know part of it is to build up a guy too, right? It's not just rip them, rip the shit out of people. That's not never gets you anywhere. It's like it's life. Mm -hmm. You gotta if the coach comes in and you think that he's excessively hard on some younger kid that hasn't, you know, like he's just. You know, uh, you get you know, you make sure you get over there. You invite them out for dinner. You do you know, whatever you need to do to to balance it out, mm -hmm. and to make sure that the next game that they're they're at the best. They're at the they're they're at their mental best to be able to go and physically play. Mm. You know, right? Honestly, no. That's, that's, I, yeah, yeah. There's there's it's one thing to to, to take somebody down, line. but you got to also bring them up. Yeah. Right. You got to be. You got to have some positives there. You got to when and when you're shit, you got to call yourself out. Like when you're bad, phew, like you got to get upset with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I just I, w I I wouldn't imagine that that's the only thing Stevie did. But I just I've I've always wondered because you uh, at least in our dressing rooms when we've talked to you, you're just a really like happy, fun, fun guy cracking jokes and that sort of thing. And I just kind oh, of oh, I love practice. Yeah. Oh, practice with and I had I sat beside some really funny guys. You know, uh, there's uh, our room has, has had some really good humor in it. We Who had, was the, do you remember? Who oh, there's a bunch. I mean, Daniel Lacroix, he used to come in even before he, he, he get in and uh, he was an artist and he could do cartoons of funny scenarios and make fun of coaches. And like, it was unbelievable wow. what he would draw. It was really quite good. Really? Wow. Keith Jones is one of the, he's got some terrific dry humor. Johnny's flat out, you know, <laughs> just, just, oh my God. You said that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what he's like. Absolutely. Uh, there, was a, there was a bunch of guys. You know, there, was, there was a good. There was a, a good group, and every dressing room has got, seems to have a, a you know a, a lots of humor. Everyone kind of finds their, their their role in it, but it's mm -hmm. it's fun. It is. It's a good time, and then when it's it's go time for uh, for games, uh, no, none of that shit really uh, comes out that much, right? Yeah. How how important is it for the guys in the locker room to like each other? Like, is, is that a key to success or can you hate each other and still win? That's a good question. I, I, that's, a, that's a really good question. You know, theoretically, you'd love everyone to, to get along. But not every, you got 20 guys, 22 guys, 23 guys in that room. Mm -hmm. it's, mathematically, it's, that's not going to happen, right? There's, there's going to be friction. There's always going to be friction. You're also battling for, for, for job, right? Um, and what, how some guy acts one way is fine with a certain group and how he, that he acts that same way. And, and the other, you know, the other half might look at it differently. It depends. Like, so I don't know. I don't think you got to love everybody. Right. right. I don't think so at all, but you got to respect them. Mm -hmm. And if they're contributing and you respect them and they're doing their job, then let's go, you know, um, like we're all going to have different political views and we're all going to have different, the game is hockey. So whatever the, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's go yeah. fucking play yeah. and you can figure out the rest of it later. But when it's time to go, we're, you know, we're there and we got to support each other. Hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, we haven't had the chance to talk about this, but you know, Steve, longtime resident of Oshawa, 
he has uh, abandoned them. He has since abandoned I'm, them. I'm in Ajax now, but, but uh, he's, you know. he's creeping west. Yeah, <laughs> creeping west. So he's a creeper. You, I mean, you you spend some pretty significant time with it's the schwa. Yeah. Yes. What what was it like? You know, with Jennings in the in the '80s, and you know, you're a top 80s, top guy. 80s, and, so. Yeah, uh, 89, 90. And by the way, you're all over that building. You, Bobby Orr, and John Tavares are everywhere yeah, in there still. Yeah. Um, We had fun. <laughs> in the 80s? No way. <laughs> all late 80s. I don't know what happened earlier. But we were having a good time. Um, we were in that old, the odd, right? It was the, mm-hmm. uh, the, the low... You couldn't flick the puck very high, or <laughs> but he did the roof. Yeah. Oh my god! It was like a forty. It was like a forty-two hundred seat arena, or for they call it. Uh, maybe it was like thirty-six, and the you know the the, the fire marshal. Uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. Six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it was so loud in there. It was it was a riot, and then you know you played Peterborough on a Friday night, and uh, you know the boys got out of uh, out of work, and they went to the bar, and then they you know I'm, I'm talking about the people in the, in the stands, um, they were loud and vocal, and it was intense. It was it was great. What's that like being 16 and being in a rivalry like it's that? Awesome. It's awesome. It's great. Well, I was at Saint, I played it for St. Mike's, so when St. Mike's rolled in, you know you came into St. Mike's, our school the school was behind your team. Like there was, let's, you know, it was, it was awesome. So I was used to that. Um, and it was fun. You, 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 it helps. It, you, you, uh, you seem to play, you play better. Like you just absorb that energy and you, you want to go, go, go. It's, it's, it's the best. I mean, that's why it's such a big advantage to, to play at home. Mm-hmm. A uh, friend of mine reached out this past week because I did a video for the Jumbotron in Oshawa yeah. uh, for uh, uh, the Generals did Pride Night. And he reached out to me. He's like, that's really cool that you did that. Also, fuck the Gens, go Pete's. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, and that's, that is awesome. Right? Yeah. 100%. That's, that's, that's why it's, but that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. yeah. You know, applaud that. Celebrate that kind of stuff. That's great. That's what you want. You know, we go into Peterborough. It was no walk in the park. Right? No weird you know, building they, too. They still haven't figured out what a corner. Is, right? No, <laughs> no. Okay, to explain that. Guys. What, what, Peterborough. That? Have they got? Is the Queen still up there? Last I checked, yeah. Okay, they got this mural of the Queen. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, is it the biggest you've ever seen in your life? It's enormous. It's an. I was there like oh, Queen Elizabeth just prior yeah, to COVID. Yeah, yeah. Liz, Liz, is, Liz is Liz is up there, and it's uh, <laughs> Liz. it's probably a it's probably a sixty by forty. Whoa. Okay, so it's big. That's yeah, big. It's huge. It's okay. big, and there's like practically no seats on either side of the ice, like broadcast side of the ice, but on one end behind one of the nets, it just goes up really tall. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about the reason. ice. The ice itself. Their corners are, they don't roll like a normal corner. It's like. It's oh, it's, it's, like, a, it's like squared off. It's good. It's very. Oh, really? It's very boxy. Yes. It's, wow. It's, and it, the, there's more. Oh, I can see what you're saying. Like oh, what on, what the. F- wow. Those are, you're, you're not kidding. No, it's a, hard, it's a way different game to play in there. Right. <laughs> it's, it's strange. How is oh, that even gosh. possible? How is that even allowed? I guess oh, it's, it's, been a, like, it's been like that for a long time. Old barn. Yeah, wow! And it's a wonderful Ancient. place to go play. Yeah, I mean that's what's so great about being at Peter, in in Oshawa is is you got Peterborough close by, you got mm-hmm. Kingston, Belleville. Mm-hmm. You know, Ottawa's not that far. You know, it's it's a it's a real, and you got all these universities uh, to attend. It's it's a great spot to play. It really is. It's fantastic. I will always be an ambassador for Oshawa. What's your uh, go to order from Teddy's? Teddy's. What's Teddy? What on earth, Eric Lindros? Teddy's, the, the the famous Teddy's, where they have uh, Teddy's. It's it's right. The hamburger the spot. Yeah. The Greek uh, is he Greek? No, no. It's like they have just an army of old ladies making pies. Yeah, and then, like turkey dinners. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who was the guy on Brock? Was it Brock up near uh, Rosland? Uh, and he burgers? and he made burgers, and he'd yell at you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I forget the guy's name. What well, would he yell at you? <laughs> what do you want? You know, like, <laughs> like it was, it was. 
<laughs> catch you off guard if you weren't used to them. Oh god! Whoa, 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 just one <laughs> burger, please. <laughs> like the soup Nazi from Seinfeld. Was, <laughs> yeah. He might have started it. It was. <laughs> Like, well, now I got to go back to Whitby and I never try to find the place. It's, it's uh, Johnny, Johnny Burger. Johnny Burger. Johnny Burger. Rings a bell. Johnny Burger. Go Google it here. <laughs> it's it's He'd scream at you. <laughs> what? what do you want? <laughs> Johnny's Burger. Johnny's, Johnny's yeah, Burger. Right. There you go. Uh, it's got a four uh, and a five rating. That must have been Steve, good. You've never uh, been. You lived there for uh, how long? Ten years at Simcoe Street. Four three three Simcoe. Simcoe. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's uh, okay. You yeah. never went there. No. no. I never went there. But now I just. You I want to that. go for the experience. Get in there. Just and hesitate <laughs> when you go to order. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. I'm not gonna lie. All right. Wait I'm looking, for it. Wait I'm looking for at it. TripAdvisor. Wait for Everybody's it. like, and then unpleasant owner, rude. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but like all these four and five uh, star there's a ratings. Lot of, yeah, there's the a lot. It's great. The food's great. Another, <laughs> another, food's another, great. another one's a little bit better about it. Unpretentious. Then the core is fine. <laughs> Unpretentious. Hey, Johnny's not part. writing any Hallmark cards anytime soon. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Nice. wow. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, listen, Eric, it's it's <laughs> it's <laughs> Well this hasn't been any fun at all. No, no, no. no. Man. No, listen, you, uh, thank you for coming in and sharing your time and and uh, obviously, you know, for being so great with us with the Easter Seals uh attorney as well. But uh it's been a real pleasure to talk to you. We all grew up like watching you, worshiping you, all that sort of thing. So thank you for for giving some fans some time. We really appreciate it. Oh, listen, great for having, it's, it's wonderful to be here and congratulations to you guys. You guys have taken this to the new level, the next level and, uh, you're breaking yeah. that news. We yep. haven't said anything. But yeah. Yes, we well, are. Yeah. let me break it for you. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Moving on up. Um, so that's that's terrific. It really is. And uh, yeah, joy to be here. I can't wait to come back. It's, uh, it's been a hoot. If awesome. the Flyers get pissed up, we'll give you a job. <laughs> Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Get a sports book. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.